This is a video about how I went about building this workbench. Now, this, is a, this was a pretty fun project. Anytime you do a project like this, it's best to get a drink you like, some music you like, and just go to work in a good environment. Now, uh, what I knew when I started was I wanted it 8 feet wide, 2 feet deep, 3 feet high. I also knew I wanted a shelf above the tabletop and a shelf below. And lastly, I knew I wanted a vise. So those were the things I started working with. Now I'm going to assume you already know how to cut a board, but this is my lazy way of doing it since I know I need more than one piece. So what I do is I take the tape measure, measure out 31 inches, which is what I need for this board, mark out 31 with the pencil, mark it with a framing square, and then stack the three boards on top of each other that I want. Now I grab my saw, and I make the depth on the saw just a little more than one 2x4, so that it scores the next board. And then, I cut the first board and each subsequent board. exactly where that score is, and I'm just digging it out a little further. That's how I cut three boards all the same length. Now you do want to make sure before you start that all the edges are lined up perfectly. Otherwise you'll get a screwy board, which is never good. Now if you're going to use my magical method of cutting three boards at a time, just be aware that the more boards you cut, the less likely they are to be just like each other. I usually cap it out at about three, but this is about what the results are. I've uh, leveled these ends with each other. And these are the results. So like they're not exact, but they're pretty close. As close as I would ever need them. Now when I actually went about building this, I started first by building the rear leg, then by building the front legs, then the wooden frame that's actually beneath this table, the wooden frame beneath the shelf below this table, then I started building the shelf. So let's get started by building the rear leg here. Okay, now this side is going to be the bottom. So what I do is I take the factory edge, the one that says premium, and I line the two edges up. Then, with these Irwin quick grips, which are amazing by the way, just clamp it into place. So one side, Two sides, and just make sure very carefully, second time, once it's gripped, once it's clamped, that this is flat. It's not quite flat, so I'm going to take a mallet and just bump it over a little bit. Perfect. Now take a pilot hole drill bit, flip this thing over, and drill some holes. I just want my screws on the back instead of on the front. I want to have it so that I have a minimum number of screws showing from the front. These don't have to be very exact. I'm going to put four screws. Now switch to your little screwdriver bit. Now this one is really beat, so these screws are going to give me some trouble. So, the footage is so bad, in fact, that I'm not going to show it to you. So, I was using cheap drill bits from this Ryobi bit set. Yeah, bad idea, don't do that. So I went to Home Depot and got myself some DeWalt bits, which are good, but I also found these Milwaukee bits. They're a little bit more expensive. They look like this. And they're awesome. So if you run into those, don't hesitate to buy those. I mean, the DeWalt are good, but the Milwaukee are awesome.
Now let's keep moving on. So what I did was I took a piece of scrap, and this is where the, uh, the shelf is going to end up. 2x4 that makes up the shelf. So I just line that up in there. I butt the next piece right up on top of it. And push them nice and snug. I don't really mind if it's a tight squeeze to get this in, so I'm going to make it as snug as possible. And then our quick grips. somewhat snug so I'm gonna make it more snug grabbing the rubber mallet yeah, there we go much better and now let's flip it over and screw her in Grab the bit we want to use for pilot holes and let's let's do this. Throw the drill in reverse, make the holes for the head. And start screwing it in. Bad sound, whatever. That's what I get for using the cheap screwdriver bits from like a crappy drill set. There we are. Next piece done. Now moving on, let's start building this leg here. Okay, so the pieces that go on the front, what I did was I took another nine and a half inch piece, stuck it on the bottom just like the ones that go on the back, and I took this piece here on top, which was originally like yay long, I stuck it on top, butted it up against a stud, and then put a pencil mark, chopped it off. Sorry, I would have showed you that, but I forgot. So now that we got it cut to length, we need to screw this in. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, now with this piece, it's important to remember that with these two, we are going to chop another three and a half inches off. So when you drill your holes, start you know about five inches down. Switch the bit out. Let's start screwing this thing in. It's going a lot smoother than last time because I decided that cheap drill bit set of uh, screwdriver bits was not working for me. I went and got some real ones. Got a couple of DeWalt bits. Alright, now 
we have something important to do. The way I've designed this is I want the countertop with a lip and the shelf with a lip. So now we're going to flip this over, take a stud, line it up with the top with another stud, grab a pencil, line the top up, butt it up against there, let that go somewhere, and draw a line. I need to plug the worm drive in. We'll hack that off. Alright, we'll make sure it works. Beautiful exactly what we want. Bring this up to the camera so you can see it a little better. Those two are like right on par. All right, so let's move on. Now let's work on the piece just beneath the workbench. Okay, I want to take a moment and talk about the orientation of the boards with respect to your workbench. Now say I were to put this 2x4 under my workbench tabletop, oriented as it is now, so long ways horizontal. Now it doesn't take very much pressure to bend the board, so you're going to get bowing the tabletop. Now honestly it's not that much better if you use two 2x4s. Two so you use two 2x4s, two you still get a good bit of bending, so my weight will bend it significantly. Now on the other hand, if you take one 2x4, and you orient it the other way around, so it's going long ways vertical. Now this, you get like no bending. And it's because the polar moment of inertia of a board like this is significantly larger than a board like this. So when at all possible, if you're going to have vertical stresses and vertical load, you want to have the board oriented like this, not like this. There's some situations where you need a low profile. In that case, it's really up to you. But in any case possible, try to get the board oriented long ways vertical. Now some of the joints you're going to see next require pocket holes, so I'll show you how to dig those out. So now we're going to dig some pocket holes. This is a Craig Tool pocket hole jig. It's pretty decent. It's pretty pricey also. It's about 100 bucks. If you're thinking about buying one of these just for this project, don't do it. If you plan on using it some other times, great, go for it. Stick it in the jig and let's make those pocket holes. And you have a nice set of pocket holes. Here's the top piece. As you can see over on this corner, the back is slightly longer than the rest of this piece. That's so I can have a three inch lip. I wanted to have it, this back piece extend all the way to the edge of the workbench, but the rest I wanted a three inch lip. There's two pieces here because I kind of just winged this plan and in order to make this plan work I needed to have a support that goes all the way up through this, which you'll see in a minute. And it's pretty easy. I mean, it's put together with pocket holes and screws. It's pretty simple, not too difficult. So let's move on to the next piece. 